Hey guys, welcome back. So you've got NA in running locally in Docker, maybe even integrated with free LLMs like DeepSeek or Llama that's already powerful. But there's a major limitation right now. You can only access your workflows through localhost. That means only your machine can run or trigger them. You can't share workflows, trigger them from another device, or integrate with tools like Telegram, Gmail, YouTube, or Stripe because those platforms require URLs served from a domain. Sometimes they specifically need a public webhook URL tied to a valid domain, and localhost just won't cut it. So how do we take this local setup and upgrade it to production level without paying for a domain or cloud server? So why we need a domain? Most cloud services like Google, Facebook, or Stripe expect your app to have a public domain, like abc.com, or n8n.com. So if you want to integrate those services into your workflows, you usually need to buy or own a domain. They don't accept raw IPs or local host addresses. That's why hosted platforms like n8n Cloud give you a subdomain automatically. But buying a domain and setting up DNS isn't beginner friendly, and it adds cost. So in this video, we're gonna do the same thing, but free, using ngrok, a tool that gives you a public HTTPS domain and tunnels it directly to your local server. Let's dive in and turn your local NAN setup into a secure production-ready environment without spending a dime. But before we get started, I've got something special for you that can take your learning to the next level. We've just launched a free community on school designed for automation enthusiasts, no-code builders, and AI explorers like you. It's called Zero to Launch AI Automation Community, the most up-to-date space where the latest AI and trends become real, explained in the same clear, intuitive way you see in my videos. And here's what makes it different. Get your questions answered faster with full threads, screenshots, and community discussions that go way deeper than a reply on a YouTube comment ever could. You'll get instant access to the templates I use in my YouTube tutorials, along with other future workflows and resources. These help you save countless hours and let you build without starting from scratch. You can join the Zero Two Launch community right now using the link in the description. It's completely free. All right, let's jump back in and get your NAN setup ready for production. Like I mentioned earlier, we're gonna use ngrok to expose our local NAN server to the internet. But what exactly is ngrok and why do we need it? Engrok is a tunneling service that makes your local server accessible from anywhere on the internet, securely and for free. Here's what it does. It gives you a free public domain. It creates a secure tunnel from your machine to the web, and it automatically enables HTTPS, which is required by most APIs and platforms like Telegram, Stripe, or Google. You can build and test production-grade workflows from your laptop. No cloud server, no domain purchase needed. Now that you know what ngrok is, let's set it up. Go to ngrok.com and sign up for a free account. Once you're in, you'll land on your ngrok dashboard. It will walk you through how to install ngrok on your machine and deploy your local server to the internet using a secure public domain. Now let's install ngrok on your machine. Either follow the CLI instructions or just download and unzip it directly. Super simple. After successfully downloading and unzipping Ngrok, we're almost ready to go live. But first, we need to update our NAN Docker container to work with the new public domain. And don't worry, we'll do this without losing any of your workflows, credentials, or data. Now it's time to upgrade your N8N container setup so it can communicate with the outside world through Ngrok. Head back to Docker Desktop, and here's what we'll do. Stop and remove the old container. Reuse the same volume or bind mount for the data folder. Launch a new container with updated environment variables, including your ongrok domain. This will keep your data safe while unlocking secure public access to your workflows. All right, let's go ahead and launch a new container using the N8N image. This time with updated environment variables, including the ngrok domain we'll use to expose our local server to the internet. As usual, we'll start by giving our container a name and assigning a random number for the port. 
This keeps it separate from any other containers we might be running. Now, here's an important part. When setting up the volumes, we need to make sure we use the same N8N data folder from the previous container we deleted earlier. This is how we make sure none of your workflows, credentials, or execution history get lost. The container path will still be like this. That's the default path Docker uses to store N8N's container data internally. So essentially, the container path is automatically mapped 1-1 to the host path, which is the N8N data folder we just configured. To put it simply, the host path is the folder on your computer, where you can browse and manage N8N data directly. The container path is where N8N stores that data inside Docker. And because they're linked, both paths will always reflect the same data. So even if you delete or recreate the container, your workflows, credentials, and settings will stay intact, as long as the host path stays the same. Now let's move on to the environment variables. This is where we unlock all the important capabilities. First, we'll add the variable that allows N8N to install and manage community nodes like the MCP nodes or any custom packages you might want to use later, just like we did before. Next, we need to set the N8N editor base URL. This defines the main access point for the N8N front end. Basically, it's the public URL that the editor interface will use. Instead of accessing it through localhost like before, we'll now use a static domain from ngrok, so we can access N8N from any device, anywhere. All right, let's head over to ngrok, open the dashboard, and claim a domain. Once that's done, we copy the public URL ngrok gives us, and we'll set that as the value for our N8N editor base URL. Make sure to include HTTPS, because ngrok gives us a secure HTTPS domain, and that's required for most third-party integrations to work properly. Now for the next critical part, we need to set the webhook URL. And here, we'll use the exact same value as the editor base URL. So, what is the webhook URL, and why is it important? A webhook is simply a way for another service, like Telegram, Stripe, or Google, to notify your server in real time when something happens. A user sends a message to your Telegram bot. A payment is completed in Stripe. A YouTube comment gets posted, all of these events rely on a webhook URL, a public secure address that those services can use to send data to N8N. So by setting the webhook URL to your ngrok domain, you're telling services like, hey Telegram, hey Google, here's my webhook. Anytime something happens, notify me here. And that's how N8N can process these events immediately and automatically. Finally, we'll add one last environment variable, NAN default binary data mode. Set this to file system. This setting controls how NAN handles large files, like PDFs, images, or videos, which are treated and stored as binary data during workflow execution. By default, NAN stores these files in memory, we mean your computer's RAM. The short-term memory your system uses to run apps quickly. But when files get large, keeping them all in RAM can slow things down or even crash your container. So instead, we switch to file system mode, which tells NAN, don't store binary files like images, audio, and memory, save them temporarily to the disk. This helps improve performance and stability, especially when working with large file uploads or processing heavy data. It reduces memory usage. But just to be clear, NAN will still use memory to load node packages and workflow execution data. So make sure your system has enough RAM to handle that too. This is a recommended best practice for most self-hosted setups, especially if you plan to run larger workflows or integrate with file-heavy apps like Gmail, Dropbox, or scraping tasks. Next, Hit the run button to start creating the new N8N container. Give it a moment, and once it starts, you should see the ngrok URL appear directly in the container terminal. That means everything was set up correctly. The container is running, the environment variables were applied, and your ngrok domain is now securely pointing to your local host. 
specifically on port 555 or whichever port you configured. All right, before we test the ngroc URL, let's quickly confirm that the new N8N container is still using the same data from the one we deleted earlier. Open your browser and go to localhost on port 555. Log in with your credentials, and if everything's connected correctly, you should see all your previous workflows. Awesome. That confirms our volume mapping worked perfectly. No data lost, no setup redone. Next, let's go ahead and test the ngrok public URL. All right, it looks like the URL says offline, that's expected. Why? Because right now, ngrok and your local machine are not fully connected. ngrok needs a way to authenticate your machine and link it to your ngrok account. To do that, we need to add your ngrok auth token to your local computer. This token acts like a password. It tells ngrok, hey, this domain belongs to me. Let me use my public domain to expose my local server securely. Let's go ahead and run the command that does this. First, open your terminal and navigate to the folder where you downloaded and unzipped ngrok. If you're on Mac, just use the built-in terminal app. If you're on Windows, you can use the Windows Terminal or Command Prompt. The commands will be mostly the same. All right, head back to the terminal, use these basic commands to check where you are, and move into the ngrok directory. Once you're inside the folder where ngrok is located, you're ready to run the auth token command. If you're on Windows, you can copy and run the command. If you're on Mac or Linux, make sure to add dot slash before ngrok. This command will automatically add your token to a config file called ngrok.yml, which is stored in your local system. If you're curious, you can open this file and confirm it contains the token you got from your ngrok dashboard. Now your local machine knows your public domain and ngrok is officially authorized to connect it. All right, now your local machine knows your public domain and ngrok is officially authorized to connect it. Now let's do the final step, actually turning on the tunnel to bring your local NAN server online. We'll do that by running this command. Replace the default port with the port your NAN container is running on, which is 5555. This tells ngrok to map your secure public domain to your local server running on port 555. Awesome. We've now successfully deployed our self-hosted N8N instance to the internet using ngrok. You can now access your N8N editor from any device using this public URL. Trigger webhooks from services like Telegram, Stripe, or Google, and run your automations in production mode, securely and for free. From local to production, without the cost, and there you have it. We started with a simple local N8N setup. Locked behind local host, and step by step, we turned it into a production-ready automation platform. Live on the internet, using Docker and ngrok. You didn't need to buy a domain, you didn't need a cloud server. You didn't lose any of your workflows or credentials. And now, you can trigger webhooks, run workflows, and access your automation dashboard from anywhere. Securely, just like with an N8N cloud subscription, but without the monthly fee. This is the power of self-hosting. Full control, zero cost, and endless possibilities. Also, don't forget to join the Zero Two Launch No Code AI Automation Community using the link in the description. If you found this helpful, hit that like button, subscribe for more No Code Plus AI content, and drop a comment below to let me know what you're building next. I'd love to hear it. Let's keep automating, and I'll see you in the next one.